Welcome to our channel. Today, we're diving deep into the fascinating world of thermal power plants, where heat is converted into electricity. These facilities play a crucial role in powering our homes and industries, and a significant part of that process involves the use of coal. In thermal power plants, coal is burned in large boilers to produce steam, which drives turbines that generate electricity. We'll explore how these boilers work, the various types used in different plants, and the technologies that enhance their efficiency and reduce emissions. Join us as we uncover the intricate technology and processes that make it all possible. Let's embark on this journey to understand the vital role of thermal power plants. This is the high-pressure turbine, a critical component in the power generation process. Steam from the boiler enters this turbine at an incredibly high pressure and temperature, ready to begin the process of energy conversion. The steam enters through this inlet, carrying immense kinetic and thermal energy. At this point, the pressure is around 170 bar, and the temperature can reach up to 540 degrees Celsius. As the steam expands through the turbine blades, it forces them to rotate. This rotational motion is harnessed to drive the turbine shaft, which is directly connected to a generator. The turbine rotates at extremely high speeds, often around 3,000 revolutions per minute. This mechanical energy is crucial for the power generation process. As the steam flows through the HP turbine blades, it expands and loses pressure due to energy extraction. After passing through the HP turbine, the steam's pressure drops but still contains significant energy. It moves to the reheater to regain temperature and pressure, optimizing efficiency for the next stage of energy extraction. Generating heat that's transferred to the steam through heat exchangers, boosting its temperature. We'll dive into all the different heaters in the boiler room later, but for now, let's just focus on the reheaters. To maintain efficiency, the steam is directed into the primary reheater, where it passes through tubes heated by flue gases. Here, the steam temperature begins to rise again. The steam then moves to the secondary reheater, where it's heated to even higher temperatures. After reaching its peak temperature, the steam exits the secondary reheater and enters the intermediate pressure turbine through the inlet steam pipe. Ready for the next phase of power generation. The reheated steam then travels through the inlet steam pipe to the intermediate pressure turbine. The combined reheat valve controls steam flow by opening and closing precisely as needed. This valve regulates the flow of steam between the primary reheaters and the intermediate pressure turbine. If demand drops, the valve partially closes, restricting steam flow and reducing pressure. When energy demand is high, the valve opens wider, allowing more steam to pass through to the turbine. By opening and closing precisely, the valve protects the turbine from pressure surges, and maximizes power output. The steam rushes forward, meeting the IP turbine blades with immense force. This interaction is vital, as it harnesses the steam's thermal energy, causing the blades to rotate at high speeds. Finally, we see the steam exiting the turbine, now at a lower pressure, as it makes its way to the low-pressure turbine. 
This process ensures efficiency in energy production, as the steam continues its journey through the system. As the steam exits the intermediate pressure turbine, it flows towards the low pressure turbine. Here, the steam has already lost a significant portion of its pressure and energy, but there's still enough to drive another set of turbine blades. Low pressure turbines use two types of blades, stationary and rotating blades. The rotating blades are connected to the turbine shaft and are free to move. When the high speed steam flows over these blades, it transfers its energy to them, causing the rotor blades to spin. As the steam exits the low pressure turbine, it enters the condenser, shown here in vibrant red, representing the high temperature steam. Within the condenser, the steam cools down as it releases its heat to the cooling water circulating inside. A stream of circulating cooling water flows in from the inlet, shown in green. As this cooling water absorbs heat from the steam, it gradually turns red, indicating its increased temperature. This heated water then moves upward and falls from the cooling tower, cooling down again and returning to a blue color, ready to be recirculated. This process efficiently converts the steam back to liquid water, collected at the bottom of the condenser, to be reused in the power generation cycle. Steam exits the low pressure turbine and flows through a pipe, shown here in blue to indicate its lower temperature. It then enters the low pressure heaters, where extracted steam preheats the feed water before it returns to the boiler. This process conserves energy, making the plant more efficient. Here, the feed water enters the derator, where it's sprayed into a chamber and mixed with steam. This process heats the water and releases dissolved gases, like oxygen and carbon dioxide. By removing these gases, the derator prevents corrosion and protects the boiler and piping. In this simulation, we see the economizer recovering heat from the flue gases as they flow over tubes carrying cooler feed water. The hot gases transfer their heat, gradually warming the water before it enters the boiler, which reduces the fuel needed for combustion. The color gradient in the tubes shows this heat exchange, cooler feed water enters and warms up as it absorbs energy from the gases. By capturing this waste heat, the economizer boosts energy efficiency and minimizes environmental impact. After leaving the economizer, the steam enters the steam drum, where it separates from any remaining water. Heavier water particles settle and are sent back for reheating, while the lighter steam moves forward to the next set of heaters in the boiler room. After the steam drum, the steam moves to the sidewalls of the boiler. Here, the sidewalls are designed to enhance the heating process. They contain additional heating surfaces that allow the steam to absorb more heat from the combustion gases, increasing its temperature and pressure before moving on. As steam flows through the sidewalls of the boiler, it absorbs radiant heat, increasing its temperature. This heated steam then moves toward the primary superheater. The superheater is crucial in boosting the steam's thermal energy, preparing it for efficient expansion through the turbine. In this part of the process, the steam gradually transforms from its saturated state to superheated steam, ready for the next stage in power generation. After steam passes through the primary superheater, it moves on to the secondary superheater. Here, it undergoes further heating, increasing its temperature without raising its pressure significantly. This stage is crucial, as it ensures the steam reaches a high enough temperature to maximize the efficiency of the turbines and reduce moisture in the steam at later stages.
The secondary superheater operates by channeling steam through a series of tubes exposed to the hottest flue gases from the furnace. This section ensures that the steam can handle the extreme conditions within the high pressure turbine. After reaching the desired temperature, the steam exits the secondary superheater and moves on to the tertiary superheater. Here, it receives one final boost in temperature, ensuring it's in the optimal state for efficient turbine work. This additional heating stage is especially important in modern, high efficiency power plants, where every degree of temperature contributes to overall performance. After steam is heated to its maximum temperature in the superheaters, it flows to a critical component, the main stop valve. High temperature, high pressure steam travels through the inlet pipe, channeling energy from the superheaters to the main stop valve. The main stop valve regulates steam flow to the turbine. In emergencies, it quickly shuts off the steam supply, protecting both the turbine and the system. When fully open, it allows maximum flow for optimal turbine operation. Controlled by the plant's automated systems, the valve responds rapidly to changes in pressure and temperature, ensuring safe and efficient operation. The main stop valve is essential for the safe and efficient generation of power, acting as a critical safeguard that ensures the reliability of the entire power plant. The journey begins with the delivery of raw coal, which is inspected for quality and stored in silos. The coal is then fed into the pulverizers, where it undergoes initial crushing. Inside the pulverizer, mechanical forces break the coal down into a fine powder. This process involves high-speed rotating blades and air jets, which create a turbulent flow that ensures uniform particle size. In the boiler room, pulverized coal from the pulverization process is burned at high temperatures, producing heat. The heat is used to convert water in the boiler into high-pressure steam. This steam is essential for driving the turbines that generate electricity. The exhaust from power plants contains particulate matter and various oxides of nitrogen and sulfur, emitted at high temperatures. Chimneys are designed to release exhaust gases above the inversion layer to ensure effective dispersion of pollutants. A generator is a device that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. It operates on the principle of electromagnetic induction. The stator is the stationary part of the generator. It consists of coils of wire that create a magnetic field when an electric current passes through them. The rotor is the rotating component of the generator. It can be either a salient pole rotor or a non-salient pole rotor, depending on the design. As the rotor turns, it cuts through the magnetic field lines established by the stator windings. To maintain contact with the commutator as it spins, we have the brushes. These conductive materials, often made of carbon, allow the direct current to flow from the commutator to the external circuit, providing a steady and reliable supply of DC power. The generator has a terminal, 
often called the end box, where the wires are connected. These output wires are usually color-coded in red, yellow, or blue to show different connections. The generator produces electrical power, which is then sent to the grid or used to power local devices. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any updates. We've got more exciting content coming your way, so stay tuned. And don't forget to ring the bell icon for notifications. See you in the next video.